So if you already have an ASUS motherboard or you're thinking about purchasing an ASUS motherboard and you want to know a little bit more about RGB lighting control using that motherboard, we're going to get into it here real quick. Now when we talk about motherboard RGB control, what we're talking about is the motherboard itself is the RGB controller. It'll have a number of different RGB elements, uh, meaning it has some RGB lighting built into it. Maybe you're going to want to check your specific model to be sure. Most ASUS boards are going to have two different types of ports. It's going to have an RGB header, uh, which is going to be a 12 volt RGB header, meaning it's going to have four pins, a 12 volt signal, a red, green, and a blue signal. It's a four pin connector. The header that most of us are using and are interested in is the five volt ARGB header, uh, which is a three pin connector. Uh, the connector actually has four positions on it, but the one pin is not present and on the connector it's blanked out. So that's a five volt signal uh, and it's got a data signal and a ground. So the software you want to become familiar with if you're talking about ASUS RGB lighting control is Armory Crate is the primary one. Now Armory Crate includes the Aura Sync software. There is also Aura Creator out there and what Aura Creator allows you to do is create some very customized lighting sequences. Now Aura Creator is its own piece of software. It's not required for you to use it. Uh, Aura Sync has some basic built-in functions for you to do, but really to get the full potential out of it, you're going to want to get Aura Creator as well. The other piece of software you might want is AI Suite. Now what that does for me primarily is does fan control. Because Armory Crate does very basic fan control, it just gives you like, you know, slow, medium, fast. Whereas the AI Suite, you can then go in there and create custom fan curves, things like that. In addition to using Aura Sync and Fan Expert, you may have controls over your fans and RGB lighting using the UEFI BIOS. Uh, I recommend that you check your specific motherboard for what options you have in the BIOS, as they may differ from motherboard to motherboard, but be aware that there might be something there. Check it out. Now to install the software, just do a quick search for Armory Crate and you'll be able to find it or go to Asus's website and do a search there. Once you get to the download site, it's actually going to download Armory Crate. So go ahead and get that downloaded and install it. It's a fairly simple install. So this brings up a screen where you can choose from a couple of different options. The one I would recommend that you do choose is Install Aura Creator. So just a really quick tour of the Armory Crate software. Obviously it lands you on the dashboard here, which is just gonna give you some basic information about your hardware you know what your current speeds of your cores are on your CPU uh, some GPU information and uh, in addition to you know what speed your RAM is running pretty basic over to the right side you get just some quick panels now you can move these panels around and kind of organize this as you want uh, obviously you kind of get some of your profile information your game launchers uh, things like that they you know some basic statistics over here as well now the primary one that we're going to talk about today is AuraSync. So you do kind of get a quick selector panel here. And going through these, these are very basic. Of course, you can do static. From this window here, you really can't change any of the parameters of the effect. So but static will just set it to a single color. Of course, you get breathing. Strobing, of course, they're, they're very basic. Uh, you get a color cycle feature, you know, which is just going to cycle through a bunch of different colors. On the left here, you get all the icons of different things you can do within Armory Crate. Obviously, I is the dashboard that we just looked at. The next one down is to select your devices. And we must first update this device to continue. Update now. This brings us to the Update Center, which is another thing that Armory Crate does. Now, we need to go ahead and update the Z590 Wi-Fi Gundam Edition motherboard. So that should be up to date now. Let's go back to the device. Now let's talk about what you can configure here. Shutdown effect is the lighting sequence that will take place when Aura Sync is not running. So basically a hardware mode. And so you can select from all of the basic stuff here as well. From here you can configure the headers themselves. Now the addressable headers will be the 5 volt headers as we talked about earlier. Uh, you can do a Gen 2 uh, device on here and it should auto detect that. You can rescan for those changes. Uh, or you can go ahead and manually select the number of LEDs here. This motherboard has two headers. Your motherboard may vary in how many headers it has. It might have one or more. Some motherboards aren't going to have any. So if you're wondering whether it will do RGB, just take a look at the owner's manual, download the PDF online, and see does it have any ARGB headers, the addressable RGB headers, or any RGB headers, which are the 12 volt ones. So, but you can configure both ports here. Of course, you can go to the RGB headers, and this is a 12 volt uh, connection. Now, what that means in short is that uh, you're not going to have individual colors on the strip itself. 
And in some cases, you do need to calibrate it. So if you hit the calibration, it's going to ask you what color that do you see? And you're going to go next. And then you want to tell it what light do you see first? So in this case, I see red first, so we'll hit next. And then it's going to ask you what color you see next, which is going to be blue. Next. And finally, what color last is green. I've seen this done in a number of different ways with different pieces of software. This one's actually pretty well done that it just asks you what colors are there. Anyways, you're all done with that. That's the only setup that you can do from here. The next icon down is Aura Sync, which was one of the main features that we want this for. And so the first screen that comes up is Sync Devices. Now, you may have a whole lot more devices here because a lot of the ASUS products are going to show up here. Their peripherals and memory and RAM and you know, all sorts of stuff might be here. There may be a lot of features within some of those devices uh, that I just don't have access to them all, so we're not going to be able to go through them. But this should give you a basic overview. Now, sync devices means that you can sync certain devices together. In this case, I've got the motherboard elements and the addressable LED strips together. That's all you really are going to do in the sync devices. Now, if there was a particular device you didn't want to play in that, you could uncheck it. it does have a performance mode. If the lighting effects are kind of laggy on there, you can increase that. I've not had a situation where I've really had to play with that. I haven't noticed any difference, but uh, here is where you can also configure uh, Philips Hue. If you have some Philips Hue devices out there, you can go ahead and connect that here. Okay, but Aura Effects, this is the main screen that we're here to talk about today. So go ahead and switch over to this. This looks a lot like the basic uh, screen that we saw on the front end, but this allows you to change the individual parameters of each one. So if I go static, of course, I can change uh, the color. Just click on the color, it gives you, uh, you know, the basic color selection wheel, and we can go ahead and change that around to what we want, blue, purple, red, so on and so forth. You can put some standard colors and then custom colors and other things you can do here. You can also manually modify the RGB uh, numerical values should you choose to do that. Okay, so very basic kind of what we would come to expect. You can also do a gradient depending on the device that's out there. Uh, meaning you can change two colors and it will create a gradient for you. Uh, we get a breathing function, which is largely just the same thing. You know, we can set a single color, we can do it random, you know, which is going to change the color every time it comes up. We can do a gradient and we can also change the speed on these. We have strobing, color cycle. This is just a slow cycle through all of the different colors that are available out there. There's really no settings for this, not even a speed or anything. Rainbow, this is a quote, the rainbow puke that everybody talks about. There are times that it actually looks pretty good to kind of show it off and see how it looks. And from here, there are a bunch of different patterns that you can choose from. Some of these look better than the others, but you just have to kind of find what fits for you. Um, I didn't mind the rainbow function. I like that it has a couple of additional patterns here other than what you know we've come to expect. Of course, you can change uh, the speed of the effect and so on and so forth. Starry Night. I do personally kind of like Starry Night, but we can uh, change the background color. Say we want it blue. And of course the effect, we can make it random. And so it's just kind of a blue background with all the effects on there. And of course we can change the speed. But you can select music and then any music that's playing on your PC kind of has a corresponding light effect. So very cool, that works all right. We do have smart RGB lighting, uh, which makes this a little bit useful. Uh, CPU temperature. I personally don't use this all this much. This is a really good indicator if your temperatures are rising above a certain point. Uh, you can also select CPU usage. Adaptive color, meaning you can kind of change it to represent what's on your screen. You can customize this as to what you want, but it looks like you can really only do one box. So just depending on what you want. You know, if you have a particular application or something going on on the screen that just takes place on one little area, at least it's here that you can do it and you can save that. And that's that lower left corner. And then basically anything that occurs within that zone over here, you know, as we move this over. Uh, the other function is dark off, which just turns all the lights off on the system. Now, advanced effects, what these are, is these are the effects that you've created with Aura Creator. 
The other option here is in-game lighting effects. If you want a particular game that's uh, compatible with Aura Sync to control your lighting, uh, this needs to be on. It's on by default, so I believe there's a corresponding setting in most games that you have to uh, turn that lighting effect on. Also, if you want to integrate this into Corsair IQ, this also needs to be on, and that's what will allow IQ to talk to this motherboard. So if you go back to Aura Sync over here, and we go to Aura Effects, and we click the Aura Creator button, it will load another application for us, Aura Creator. You have to accept the licenses for this. Okay, and I agree. Welcome to Aura Creator. It's got quite a bit of help in there. I don't really want to do anything. So we'll maximize that. Now over here on the left-hand side, uh, you'll see a lot of the same effects that we've talked about. There's a, maybe one or two new ones there. I don't have any devices available, but if I go to PC Components, I can see my motherboard and my headers. So this took me a little bit to figure out, but you have to select which device you want and then come up here to set as layer. And then it brings a new layer down here on the timeline. Now, if you're familiar with video editing software, this isn't extremely different than that, but you could go ahead and select each device and select each device as its own layer. Now, what you can do is you can drag and drop lighting effects into this timeline. So if we take static here, we can drop it in. We can resize the time, so say for two seconds. And then over here on the far right, we can change what lighting parameters surround this. So if we want it to be green for that long, I do wish it gave you more of an indication down here what it was gonna do. But you can drag and drop these all around here. And you get the basic idea. And then from here, there's some you know play buttons. You know, it kind of gives you a visual representation up here as to what it's going to do. And so it's a great way to kind of just custom create anything. So of course you can rename it. So layer three, let's put motherboard, whatever. You get the idea. You can kind of customize it, get your whole timeline out. Uh, you can zoom in and out of the timeline as you get going. Then once you're done with this and you have everything the way that you want it, you can save and apply and we'll save it as a file name. So let's put Hardware Artisan. Okay. Now we have a new lighting element called Hardware Artisan. Now if I go back to Aura Sync, you can see that I have Hardware Artisan selected here. And it will go ahead and apply that lighting effect. And, and you know, so on and so forth. And you can make those pretty lengthy and do whatever you want. Select all the different colors, whatever sequences. Anyways, play around with Aura Creator. It's got some pretty cool functions to it. I like the concept of it. In IQ, you'll need to come over here to settings and then go to plugins. Now I've already got it done, but you'll need to install the ASUS plugin. And then from here, the ASUS motherboard should show up and you're basically just going to get the different components here. So I've got you know three backplate uh, lighting elements and the RGB header. It's not specific to whether that's 12 volt or five volt. I've had a really hard time getting this to run at all. At, at times it's worked, but I need to play around with this a little bit more. But the idea being is that you should be able to select these and then you know click the lighting layer and assign whatever you want to it. On this PC, I've got lots of software to control lighting from all the different manufacturers. So I may have some sort of conflict in here. I've got it all kind of shut down, or it did anyways. But even with that, with everything shut down, I've still had kind of a hard time getting it to go. But this is the integration, and this is the way that I personally would use it, and a compelling reason to maybe buy an ASUS motherboard. Um, I believe maybe this will work with MSI as well, but I need to explore that, is if you could control the internal lighting elements with this, that would be really cool, because oftentimes that's the only thing I need. Like on my main PC over here that's got a gigabyte motherboard in it, I've got to use the Gigabyte software to just control that internal uh, lighting element. Let me know in the comments below if you've used the Corsair integration uh, for ASUS motherboards and whether it's worked for you. Let's go back to tools real quick. Now, one thing I want to talk about real quick is you get just basic fan control here. If you go back to the dashboard, all you really get is silent, standard, turbo, and full speed. But that's it. You don't get any fan curves or anything in here. In order to get more control over it, you need to install this AI suite. So let's go back over to tools, uh, over to utility, and let's install AI suite. But once you get AI suite opened, it gives you a number of different things you can do, but fan control is the one thing I wanted to talk about. 
and you get this fan expert four over here and from here you can control all the different headers on your motherboard aio pump chassis fan three chassis fan two one uh, yours is going to vary depending on what motherboard manufacturer you have now it wants me to do the fan tuning section runs the fans at varying different speeds to try to get an idea of what the minimum and maximums are out there but it gives you all of the hot keys here and then of course you can tune the fans and it looks like this screen is going to be in your way until you actually go do it and of course you get some profiles and things like that that you can do uh, let's go to fan chassis i think this was on three but if you then come in here you can highlight one of these two windows and from here you can come into the graphs and you can kind of adjust and create your own custom curves. You can change the fan spin up time, spin down time, and you know, determine on. And there's a couple of other little things you can do here. You can, you can actually adjust these. Now, there's, AI Suite has a couple of other different functions, which we're not really going to go to. I really just wanted to show you the fan expert here. So just be aware of that, that that's where this is. I hope that's helped you make a decision whether you want to use ASUS motherboards for RGB control. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that, what your experiences with it are. And uh, that is going to do it for today. Thanks for watching.